Millions of Americans are bracing for what remains of Ida as the storm streaks up the East Coast, set to affect more than 60 million with dangerous conditions expected in multiple states from tornadoes to flood warnings. Early assessments out of Jefferson Parish, Louisiana are sobering. Officials say the Grand Isle Barrier Island is uninhabitable with 100% of structures damaged and four in 10 destroyed. This is 10 times worse than what we lived through for Katrina. The view from above, just one lens spotlighting Louisiana underwater. Satellite imagery from Maxar shows striking before and after images. Parts of the state transforming from green to blue. We don't have any levee system here. We have a railroad track and that's about it. The community of Cambridge, even now, has high water vehicles moving in and out, where residents like Damien Chachirsky have been marooned. How many people do you think were rescued here from your observation? My observation, at least 300. 300? Yeah. In this community? Uh, I believe so. Ida's overall death toll is almost certain to rise. In Virginia, four people are missing this morning after heavy flooding and landslides in the small town of Hurley. And in Slidell, Louisiana, an update on that man bitten by an alligator and reported missing, the sheriff saying in part, all accounts at this point are leading to a terrible tragedy that his wife had to witness. They are Katrina survivors who moved here afterwards, survived Ida, then this. She's in it. In the midst of tragedy, more heroic rescues are coming to light. Grab on my shoulder. A Mississippi police officer rescuing several people trapped in a submerged car. The frightened occupants pulled the safety from the driver's side window. Yeah, I'm damn near homeless right now. Even those who planned for flooding, like Michael Lathers of Laplace, are stunned. Everything fell. That holes in my roof. The kitchen's destroyed. Lathers blames his community's catastrophe on the multi-billion dollar levee system protecting neighboring New Orleans. When I bought this house, I didn't need flood insurance. And after Katrina, they said we needed flood insurance. Why? Those walls in New Orleans, the water pushed back in the lake. When it pushes back, this is what you get. Uh, Sam, there's also, a, of course, another big issue for folks in New Orleans. They're in the dark. They, I was hearing the mayor say that power may be restored. What is the time frame? Yeah, so the mayor says there's significant progress being made, potentially, Hoda, by the end of today. But Energy tweeting out overnight that the first light shined this morning in New Orleans East. But this is a marathon, absolutely, because there are sweltering conditions, as you already outlined, which means right now there are serious concerns about heat-related illness. Tulane University has already evacuated its students to Houston. There's conversations still on the table at this moment about trying to evacuate other folks in the city. And the concerns right now, guys, from energy are twofold. We can either try to restore the critical transmission lines or create an island grid for just the greater New Orleans area if that is what it takes to get things back up and running. Hold it back to you. All right, Sam Brock for us there in hard hit Laplace. Sam, thank you. All right, that blistering late summer heat, one of the major problems down there in the mm -hmm. Gulf. Ida's remnants making her mm -hmm. way to the northeast now. Dylan is in for Al. She's tracking the storm. Dylan, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Yeah, it could feel like 105 degrees down in the New Orleans area today. So without air conditioning, that is just so brutally uncomfortable. Now the rain is making its way into the mid-Atlantic. Look, at back through West Virginia, through Ohio, lots of heavy rain through Pennsylvania, even into New Jersey right now. The storm is still a tropical depression. It's moving northeast at 24 miles per hour. It still has winds at 30 miles per hour. So it's going to be a gusty, rainy day across the northeast. Now, we have this warm front that's going to come in first. So we're starting off the day with some rain. Then it'll look like we're going to get some breaks uh, right along the coast. But then we're going to see these pop-up thunderstorms. And those could be severe at times. And then the bulk of the rain moves through overnight and then crosses New England as we go into early Thursday morning. We could see perhaps uh, those strong gusts winds, but also uh, the potential for some isolated tornadoes in this area, especially through southern New Jersey into D.C. and into Maryland, too. As for rain, we could see a widespread five to eight inches of rain. And keep in mind, the ground is saturated. It has been a very wet summer, so this could lead to flash flooding issues through the mid-Atlantic and into the northeast as well. Hoda. All right, Dylan, uh, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.